What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of What's Good Games Live, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time right here at twitch.tv slash what's good games. I'm oh, Andrea Renee. It. Oh, wait, what was that, Brittany? I said you nailed it. Thanks, but you interrupted my flow. I had flow <laughs> going. You're supposed to flow, is supposed to continue. I was but a mere little pebble in your river of flowness, and you're supposed to just hurdle it and keep on going but then the people watching are like yo look at andrew just straight up ignore britney brombacher welcome to the uh, show you have Brit. to respond to everything you know it's that's true it's the internet and our yeah. very special guest mary kish is here welcome back to the show mary hey! thanks for having me i remembered i think i was maybe your first guest ever on what's good games ages ago you were uh, and you guys have like really grown and accomplished so much since that last time so it's really cool to see what you guys have done it's awesome thanks for having me again oh thank you and mary thank you for a long time ago featuring us on that fantastic show the setup on twitch and of course inviting us to go to twitchcon that was super fun it's really crazy to think about how much our setup has actually changed since that episode <laughs> came out <laughs> um and yeah. just how much we've done more in the streaming world since then it was my pleasure because actually when it comes to setups there's a huge range the whole point of the setup was to basically be like not every um amazing streamer has this crazy amount of money or this like uh, ungodly amount of setup stuff, like tech stuff. Um, some people do it with um, books as their monitor raisers, right? Like where we can all start somewhere and grow. Um, but you, I considered one of my higher end, someone who had a studio, you had sound baffling, you had like all this stuff <laughs> and it was really cool. And you would go through all of it and you knew every piece. You knew the hardware specs, you knew um, where it came from. It was just really neat to see like your knowledge of your own materials because you obviously had like had to deal with it with your own two hands. And that's really neat too because that is a reality of people who live stream is kind of showing how the sausage is made. It's not just the fact that you're able to be here saying hi to everybody at home, but like there is just an ungodly amount of wires underneath this setup that you guys don't. <laughs> see you know you don't see all the crap that I haven't decided to show you yet to make sure that this exists but it's it's very difficult amen yeah. to the wires and cable management right now mine's not quite where I want it to be because I haven't quite figured out um the final of um what I want the setup to be I keep moving cables around so once I get it locked in the management of the cables will be in. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is this mug that you have? Can we take a look at that? Sure. Look at how cute our, that mug is. This was our pride mug for Twitch this year. Um, unfortunately, due to quarantine, we weren't able to sell these, but um, we had certain made uh, for people who are like advocates for LGBTQ initiatives on Twitch, and we sent them to them. Um, so that was really cool to do. That is super awesome, and I'm jealous. I kind of want one. <laughs> I love them. I, I wish it. I wanted to go back to normal so that we can give them to people. It's so difficult to send T-shirts out. Do you guys have those issues, too, like being able to, like, send out swag or, like, any of that stuff? <laughs> well, the only swag that we send every month is our postcards, and because of the nature of postcards um, and mail, we don't have the same concerns about um, – you know, shipping, manufacturing, sanitization, all of that, uh, which is really great for us. But no, we don't have we don't have regular swag that we're sending out. But I can imagine the headaches. A lot it's of the suppliers up. that we've worked with have had to spend a lot of time getting back up to speed, implementing sanitization, social distancing in their warehouses, all of that. So our supplier, Teespring, who we work with, um, actually just emailed us like last week saying we're finally back up to full production. Yeah. <laughs> So um, it's that was exciting for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's total reality that we're facing right now. And it's like it kind of like finds its way into the weird things of what we do. We love doing our T-shirts every year and we weren't able to do that. And the other day I bought um, a steak sandwich and it was like twice as expensive. And they had a note saying beef is more expensive right now. So good luck. And I was like, holy crap. Like, wow. Yeah. I like that. Meat. I remember that story coming out back in like April or maybe it was early May when they were talking about how so many of the meat processing plants in the United States had been hit and had been, you know, 
shut down or temporarily shut down and had to implement all of these new procedures and that they said about now is when meat would start to become more expensive uh, right during the height of summer grilling season and that it's just you know unfortunate byproduct of the pandemic so enjoy your proteins it's a great opportunity to eat less meat everybody that's right but I digress because we are here to talk about <laughs> video games. And Mary, we have a packed show of news today. And of course, we're going to be talking with Mary a little bit later on about what she does at Twitch, what she does on her Twitch channel. So if you guys haven't submitted your questions, you can write them in at whatsgoodgames.com slash dearwgg. We'll also be trying to take some from the chat as well. But as you guys know, sometimes it's difficult for us to keep tabs on those as the chat keeps moving. So if you want to make sure we see it, what's goodgames.com slash dear wgg all right we have a few pieces of housekeeping Brittany, that i want to get to because this week is a big streaming week for us here at what's good games first up you guys i'm going back to kfgd this wednesday i will be hosting i think greg announced that today blessing announced it tim announced it somebody said that um, I'm excited to be working with my friends at Kind of Funny again, and it's not going to be nearly as much as I used to work on Kind of Funny because <laughs> there's just a lot of people at home hosting these days, so they are not going to need me to fill in as much as I used to, but I'm excited to be back working with them. And then later on on Wednesday, we're finally getting friend of the show Felicia Day is coming on to do an Animal Crossing New Horizons Twitch stream with me live at 1 p.m. Pacific. Mary, you're not really that into Animal Crossing, are you? or are you i i played it a little bit but it's not really my jam personally i got really into stardew but um animal crossing is definitely for people who like um get like really stoked about making a dope house or like uh -huh. building their island out and i'm like someone who likes to fish so i fish and then i <laughs> quit. i like yeah, it i like it fish <laughs> Brittany so likes to fish I irl yeah, I do. But, you know, I like to decorate IRL, but not in Animal Crossing. So, Andrea, as we saw your house, your Animal Crossing Island, on our Patreon stream recently. Have you done a lot of changes since then? Um, Because well, it was really impressive chat. I'm just saying, like, thank I'm very you. impressed. Yeah. I did do a lot of building yesterday. I added an entirely new themed restaurant on my island. Um, which I'm going to save for reveal on Wednesday. It's not quite done. I had to order a couple more pieces. And that nook, man, limiting me to five pieces a day is just cramping my style. <laughs> um, but I have a couple more things that I'm going to be um, judging. So if you did catch my most recent Animal Crossing stream, you have seen a lot of what's on my island since it was originally debuted during the IGN streams during their Celebrity Island tours. There's a lot more since then, but if you missed that stream, maybe just wait. Don't go watch the VOD. Just join me at 1 p.m. And then we're going to go visit Felicia's Island. Uh, actually, we're going to start with visiting, visiting Felicia's Island, um, and then she'll come to my island briefly because I only have her for a little bit of time. But we were chatting on Twitter about how we both wanted to showcase updates to our island since she was also on that IGN stream. And she's like, I've done so much since then. My island is way better. And I was like, let's show it. So we're going to do that, and so I'm very excited. And then, Brittany, we have a very special guest joining you on Thursday. Yeah, Zombie Kills will be joining me for our Xbox Live Reacts Thursday at 9 a.m. Oh, boy. I love Zombie Kills. I actually think, like, we were talking on Twitter when that, like, whole introduction happened. She is our regular. Um, she came from Mixer. She is so awesome, and she's so funny. Um, and she's, like, been on Twitch for, like, at least several months now and she's killing it. And she also like, um, she's just a brilliant spokeswoman. She knows her stuff and she takes no shit. Are we allowed to say oh. shit on your- Oh yes, oh. swearing oh, is yes. allowed on, on what's swearing good games. no shit. <laughs> Have you met me, Mary? It's all I do, it's all I know are four letter words. No, I'm really excited. She has fantastic energy and I think it's gonna be a very hyped 9 a.m. stream. Yes. Yeah, she's great. And originally, I was supposed to be joining Brit and Zombie Kills, but instead, I'm actually going to be hosting for Twitch Gaming. Woo! So I'm very yeah. excited about that. So if you guys want to watch us, of course, we'll be doing pre-shows and then watch-alongs and then a little uh, discussion afterwards. I'll have all of the links up, but uh, once 
Britt is, uh, once the Xbox showcase under is underway, you know, she'll be showing you guys the twitch.tv slash twitch gaming showcase. So that is where we'll all be watching the announcements for Xbox together. And then... You guys are ideal for the Xbox showcase. It's such a good vibe for you guys. Yeah, well, we, I think, have a lot of high hopes uh, for what Xbox is going to reveal. It's been really challenging this summer with this, like, rolling summer of gaming thing that's happening where instead of it being E3 and it's like all of the announcements are all happening at once, it's like announcement, announcement, announcement. It's just like weeks and weeks. And so it's really hard to discern like what's really like punchy news and what's just like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we're going to get some really cool, some really cool reveals, maybe a price, maybe, you know, some Halo details, a bunch of other stuff. Oh God, yes. Give me the Halo. I've been marathoning the Halo games, ladies. That's been my new thing. Oh, I was going to ask if you wanted to to do some of the Master Chief collection. Oh, yeah, girl. I'm on that Master Chief's ass. You started without me and didn't even bother telling me? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sad. Um, con- so sad. Continuing on, on Friday, we will be featured Andrea and me. Andrea and me? I'm Andrea. Brit and me. <laughs> That's what's happening here. <laughs> Listen, it's been a whole morning, everybody. Um, we'll be featured on Patreon's The Show Up. So this is a really cool show that Patreon does every week where they feature content creators across the platform in different verticals. And this week they're featuring gaming creators. And they asked if What's Good Games would like to be on the show. And we said, Avi, it sounds super fun. Um, and so we'll have the link for that on What's Good underscore games on Twitter as well. But that is happening, I believe, at 11 a.m.? 10 a.m. I thought I wrote it down, but then I didn't. Um, it's sometime in the morning on Friday, and I promise you, we'll let you know. And then, last but not least, this Saturday, Rihanna and I are going to be streaming right here at twitch.tv slash what's good games at noon. We haven't come to a conclusion about which game we're going to play yet. We've talked about Apex. We've talked about Hyperscape. We've talked about Warzone. We've talked about a lot of things. We'll figure it out by Saturday, but she and I will be streaming together here at noon on Saturday. You should play Resident Evil 6. Mm, no. <laughs> well, I, I took my shot. Yeah. You missed 100% of the shots you don't take, and you know what? The, they're fine. <laughs> but on a positive note, Brittany, I love this outfit. Is this a stitch fix? It is. It's a whole dress, Andrea. It's a whole dress. It's going to be a whopping 89 degrees here today, and it's going to get real sweaty. My legs are going to be sticking to everything I sit on. So I thought this would be a good uh, leg condom to protect the stickiness from occurring. Did you wow. say leg condom? I, I did, and then I added the word stickiness in there, and then it got real weird. Um, it's a dress. It's a dress. <laughs> what an ad for Stitch Fix. <laughs> No wonder they haven't sponsored us in a long time. They're like, Shit. listen, they're just a little too weird for us. <laughs> she called our dress a sticky condom. <laughs> but it looks adorable. Also, Mary's dress is super cute, too. Um, hey, it's also hot here. So yeah. That's that why Pacific most of Northwest our heat, right? But you guys are yeah, normally not hot, right, in Portland? Um, no, we normally get like two weeks of summer a year, but it is hot right now. Um, there is heat coming in and, uh, we're dealing with it. I, I was able to like actually, um, feel like it was summer for the first weekend ever. And that, that was awesome. It felt good. Nice. Oh, I love summer. All right. Okay. Brittany, can you handle this final piece of housekeeping before we actually get into the news? Absolutely. So we were on on Funhouse Feud, and this was so much freaking fun. So if you go to Funhouse's YouTube, <clears throat> going through puberty, hold on. There we go. <laughs> Funhouse's YouTube page, you'll see it on there. It's Funhouse Feud with What's Good Games. And it was, uh, it was a very fierce competition. We answered a lot of questions. I personally think a lot of our answers were very on point and should have been awarded points. But it's mm-hmm. not my fault those monsters don't wash their hands in the bathroom. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, it was entertaining and also surprising hearing what people were using as answers mary if you were asked what's a food that you eat with your hands what's the first thing that comes to mind pizza that mm-hmm. was i believe the number one answer do you want me to like hit a button when i do it like <laughs> show? pizza was number mm-hmm. one sandwiches were number two do you remember what number three was chips <clears throat> chips was number three chips and yeah. then that, and then like the rest count? of the answers like we were like 
if I think snacks barbecue count, is in there. now you're opening up a whole nother world of like carrot sticks and pretzels and like. What about, Mary, a food that goes chicken wings? Oh, yeah. Chicken wings. Wasn't oh, on no. there. It was not on there. Greg would be rolling in his grave if he were dead. <laughs> if I were dead, I would have been doing flips, barrel rolls in my grave. That's messed up. That's not right. It's when like, you ask people, who did they survey? Uh, the rooster Teeth employees. The office. Yeah, monsters, all of them. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, in, instead of French fries, which we thought was a win. Um, that seems. Ch- uh, chicken wings also wasn't on there. Um, they put sushi on there, though. With your hands? Yeah. I mean, Savages. you can eat sushi with your hands. It's perfect. It's actually more acceptable to eat sushi with your hands than with a fork, which, you know, some Americans do. But I would definitely not make my, like, top seven of food to eat with your hands. What's wrong with that office? <laughs> I know. They're weird. Anyway, yeah. it's a funny episode. Uh, if you guys want to watch it, as Britt said, it's on the Funhouse YouTube channel. All right. Without further ado, we have a crap ton of news to get to, everybody. So let's kick things off with Call of Duty. Bum, bum, bum. Guess what, everybody? There was another Call of Duty leak. <gasps> Stop. Wow. Surprise. Horror. Okay. Call of Duty leaks every year, you guys. <laughs> it leaks every year. Um, it just usually leaks in like April instead of in July. All right, so let me give you guys the details from our friends at Eurogamer. The Red Door pops up on the Microsoft Store, points to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Internal Alpha. So what exactly is the Red Door? It's popped up at the Microsoft Store, the bastion of video game leaks, and current speculation is it refers to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. At the time of the article's publication, the Red Door was still live, and it includes a mysterious keyhole image as well as a cryptic description. There is more than one truth. If you go looking for answers, be ready to question everything and accept that nothing will ever be the same. The Red Door awaits. Do you dare step through? According to the page, the Red Door is an Activision shooter for Xbox One that weighs in at 81.65 gigabytes, and you can download it without a special code. So what is it? Well, this isn't the first time that they've spotted the Red Door. It popped up on the PlayStation database back in June with the words COD 2020... INT Alpha 1 in the content ID. Now, without comment from Activision, we can only speculate as to the true nature of the Red Door, but seems clear that it's some sort of internal alpha for Call of Duty. Now, it's also worth noting that we're now in mid-July, and Activision has yet to announce this year's Call of Duty game. The mega publisher has never left it this late, but when you consider Treyarch is developing Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War for release just two years after its previous game, Black Ops 4, uh, normally, just as an FYI, the developers get three years, and a whole year is a lot of extra time and makes a difference. Um, may factor in disruption according to the pandemic, and Activision's traditional plans were no doubt left in tatters with stuff like the alpha floating around as debris. I don't know if you guys remember um, a couple months back, there was like chatter around um, the flow between the different studios that work on Call of Duty. And there was like some whispers about there being a disruption to the normal cadence of it trading off and on between the developers. So there has been an update to this story. Dad miners, of course, got a hold of these files. And how far down the rabbit hole did they go? Well, I mean, they're data miners. I'm not going to go into all the <laughs> specifics um, as Eurogamer did and several other articles did. One, because if you are super into Call of Duty Black Ops lore in particular, you don't want to know. I'm not going to tell you, but it's out there for you. Um, but they found a lot of stuff, needless to say. So it looks like people have managed to download this from the Microsoft Store, which was supposed to be impossible. But apparently all they do is get to the splash screen of the game. And it's listed as a demo titled Call of Duty Black Ops CIA. Is that closed internal alpha or something else? Perhaps it's a nod to the CIA's involvement in the campaign. Perhaps both. Wowzers. I mean, this isn't super surprising. Like Andrea was saying, I think it was July. It was sometime in 2019. Kotaku put out an article and said that Sledgehammer and Raven were having some production issues. So Sledgehammer had to or sorry, um, Treyarch had to step in because the development cycle is usually Treyarch Infinity Ward Sledgehammer. And th- th- it all lines up. So this is obviously a thing. I got to be honest, though. I was kind of disappointed when I learned that this was a Call of Duty game. I mean, of course it is. It's not surprising. But I thought the whole premise of the red door and that mysterious message just sounded kind of cool. I was like, ooh, what's this? And then 
it is, of course, a Call of Duty game, which is to be expected. But hopefully uh, in this one, we'll get a single player campaign, which all the rumors point to. Yes, we're getting that because Black Ops 4, if you remember, did not have a single player campaign. So I really didn't play much of it. I need my campaign. I need the flashes and the bangs and the cinematics and the dramatic deaths. I'm with you. Yeah, I loved Modern Warfare, and obviously Infinity Ward is a very different studio than Treyarch is, but I've always enjoyed Treyarch's campaigns, and I totally get why they decided to focus on zombies, because it's a big thing for Treyarch, and leaning into the narrative, because that almost felt like a campaign, but clearly, like, if you're not into zombies, or if you don't have a crew that you play zombies with, it's just not the same as a single-player Call of Duty campaign. Mary, what kind of uh, Call of Duty player are you? You campaign, MP, both? Um, I stick to the campaigns. I found that the last few campaigns of Call of Duty have been actually really impeccably done. They've been incredible and joys to play through. Um, going to space, like enjoying, like just like how they've mixed it up recently has been really cool. So I'd be quite interested in seeing where they take this. I agree. Like I thought the Red Door as well would be probably something a bit, maybe like new IP would be really interesting and would have caught my eye. But you have to understand like this is their biggest franchise. And if they are going to put marketing dollars on something, they're going to put it on COD. It's safe and it's going to do well. So Maybe they will mix it up. Maybe uh, this is coming to be a completely different version of it. Uh, maybe CIA stands for cats in Applebee's. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mary? Yes. Yes. I mean, Which I'm I down. I would play that map. I would play that map. <laughs> cats in Applebee's, the dramatic tale of catching rodents. <laughs> hopefully Applebee's doesn't have rodents. I mean, hopefully, did, like, hopefully not. Time. We don't want don't know, to man. have rodents. <laughs> Lower your bar, ladies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it is, it is Applebee's. Um, I do want to give a shout out. To, I see Zombie Kills is in the chat. Welcome. Yay. What's up? Good to oh, see hey. you. We were just talking about you. We were just talking about you and how you're going to be on the show on Thursday. It's going to be great. Yes, girls. It's going to be me and you. We're going to kill it. I don't know if you're into morning drinking, but let's get those mimosas ready. Let's go. <laughs> Zombie is amazing, and she streams a lot on here. So if you guys are looking for um, another really dope streamer, you should click on her and give her a follow. She's really yep. awesome. She loves day drinking. Oh, we're going to do it. It's going to be fantastic. Let's go. And then I will join you afterwards. All right. All right. Next story. Microsoft to launch xCloud streaming free with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate in September. So this write-up comes from The Verge. Microsoft is planning to launch its game streaming service, currently known as Project xCloud, free. That's right, free to its paying free. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers in September. The xCloud service will allow Xbox players to play games on their mobile devices and even start a game on their console and resume it on their phone or tablet. Game Pass Ultimate combines Xbox Live Access and Xbox Game Pass subscription and starting in September, xCloud game streaming into a single $14.99 monthly subscription. Microsoft is promising that more than 100 Xbox Game Pass titles will be playable on phone or tablets when the streaming service launches and while they aren't detailing which countries it will be supported at launch well, I'm sure we'll get that information in the not too distant future. The company has been building out its Azure data centers across the US and in parts of Europe with Xbox One S Blades to stream Xbox game through X Cloud. Man, I should have made it a drinking game for how many times I say the word X. I was X just going to say that. <laughs> You'd X be dead. I, I probably would be dead by now. Don't do that, kids. Um, the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate will be the only way to access X Cloud streaming at launch, but it won't always be limited to Microsoft's top subscription tier. Now, while everyone accessing xCloud game streaming in September will do so through a phone or a tablet, Microsoft isn't detailing which devices will be supported just yet. The software maker has been involved in ongoing discussions with Apple's over the App Store policies that have prevented Microsoft from testing xCloud uh, with those iOS features with the same parity that you guys see on Android. I had been wondering why that was a thing. Apple, yeah. it's your fault yet again, Apple. Um, but Phil Spencer did say, quote, we want to bring xCloud eventually to everyone, excuse me, to every screen that someone can stream games to. Right now, we're just saying mobile. There are discussions going on and we're working through things. We'll talk more specifically about which mobile devices through August and the September launch. Project xCloud won't even be the final name for the game streaming service. 
and then there's a quote about him saying it's not the final name. Um, and so what the name will be, who knows? Something with Xbox in the title would be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess. Um, it's getting this ridiculous, is, right? Yeah. Just like, um, like Xbox makes Xbox Cloud for X Cloud. Um, <laughs> Fox not included. Xbox. Phil X, X, X Spencer. Yeah, Xbox. exactly. Just like throw an Xbox in. I think that this is a giant win. I think Xbox has been super focused on being consumer first and consumer friendly and saying we want everybody to be able to play games in a more fair ecosystem. And I, I love that. And I think that this is a giant win. And I am super pumped that they announced this. I think we talked about this being like a great idea like months ago when I was like, you know what you should do, Xbox? And secretly behind the scenes, Phil was like, it's already planned. It is. Actually, at XO19, they did talk about how they wanted to incorporate streaming. Now, I don't know if that was the one we were all very drunk on kind of funny. So no. 2018? 2018. Because 2019, okay. we did on our channel. Didn't we? Okay. No. Either way. Honestly, I don't. Time is a flat circle. Who knows? It is. Your mimosas are blurring together. <laughs> yeah, they all kind of kind of turns into one big drunken stream. It's a good time. Anyway, so because I was I was reading an article uh, and there was a quote from oh, some guy who works there. I'm sorry, sir, I don't know your name off the top of my head. <laughs> some guy. Sorry, sorry. Here we go. Uh, Kareem, and he was saying how in 2020 we will enable gamers to stream from the cloud Xbox games that they already own or will purchase. We will add game streaming service from the cloud to Xbox Game Pass. So they were, they were going on behind the scenes, but you know, those little quotes, they can slip your mind from time to time. Anywho, I thought this was interesting and I, we probably covered this, but I just didn't remember the number. As of April 30th, there were 10 million subscribers to Game Pass. And by comparison, although it's a different service, PlayStation now had 1 million subs as of October of 2019. Granted, there's some like date differences there, but 10 million subs, man. Microsoft knows what the hell they're doing. That is a phenomenal deal. Dude, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is dope. It's yes. such a wonderful win for gamers. And every month I see so many people being like, thank God I have this service because you get so much game for your money. Um, it's really ideal for people who are consistent uh, video gamers or people who like to try before they buy. Um, people like me who are like, I'm going to play this at least for two days. I don't know if I'm going to like completely finish it. I'm a serial game non-finisher, but I will absolutely <laughs> play through this until like I have something else to, to deal with at work or a different game catches my eye. So it's really good for people who like to like touch lots of different games all the time. And I, I just have really enjoyed my game pass. And so to add more value to it is kind of it's unexpected in my opinion. I thought this would be an add-on. So I just think they're doing a really great job. They truly, truly are. Phil Spencer said 90% of subscribers have played something they wouldn't have tried otherwise. And 40% are playing more titles than they did before owning Game Pass. So there you go, Mary. Scientifically backed. There's also some extra Microsoft news that we can briefly talk about, if you ladies would like to. Uh, sure. So obviously, don't know if you heard Play the Xbox on. One X and the Xbox One S are stopping production. Oh, yes, I did see this story. So in a statement to IGN, a Microsoft spokesperson confirmed as we ramp into the future with Xbox Series X, we're taking the natural step of stopping the production of the Xbox One X and Xbox One S all digital edition. And they cited the development of its next-gen console, the Xbox Series S X, as well. Oh my God, how many Xs are we going to say in this effing episode? As well as continued support for digital services like Xbox Game Pass and xCloud as reasons. And then they decided to remove the 12 months Xbox Live Gold SKU for the Microsoft online store. So you can still get one or three month Xbox Live Gold passes, but you can no longer buy the 12 month passes. They're gearing up, ladies. They're, it's happening. It's happening. I think oh, this Zombie is the right Phil call. Says it makes gaming so much more affordable and we love affordability. Like, mm -hmm. this is what everybody says, right? Yes. Yeah, but it's not surprising to see them taking down the 12 month Xbox Live Gold SKU. I mean, the consoles are, they're around the corner, ladies. And I think it wouldn't be surprising to see them kind of just start selling Xbox Game Pass passes as opposed to Xbox Live and Game Pass separately. Just sell it all as one and xCloud, just one pretty package. Well, I mean, it's interesting that you bring that up because like on one hand, I like the idea that you just get Game Pass and Gold together. On the other hand, I don't like that it's going to make it more expensive, right? Uh, because Game Pass or because 
gold by itself is only $60 a year and you can frequently get it on sale or you can buy it, you know, discount cards. So if you're buying it, a, you know, a Game Pass subscription for 10 bucks a month, you know, that's more expensive than buying just gold for 60 bucks a month. So $5 more. Yeah, that's math. No, well, if Does you're that... buying it, if it's $10 a month for 12 <laughs> months, that's $120. But Game Pass comes with gold, doesn't it? No, but I'm, what, what I'm saying is like because they've bundled them together, they're forcing you to get Game Pass, whereas before you didn't have to get Game Pass. If you're like, I don't use Game Pass. I only use my Xbox for like, you know, Halo and, and Sea of Thieves, and then I don't need Game right. Pass. You know, I understand what you're saying. And you're only paying yeah. for gold. Now you're being forced to buy the bundle, which is more. But they're making the deal so good you can't refuse it that's I mean, what's happening you're not wrong no I'm with you that it's a it's a really great deal and like maybe there's a piece of the the information that I missed that does you know address that concern of people who are like listen like I know that it's a great value I just don't have that money to spend but I want to yeah. still get gold is there a way for me to still get gold at that price um and if somebody in the chat knows that information please do let me know and I'll see if I can find that out but I mean we're all on the same page that it is a great great value I just am like that's a lot more money for people yeah I think that's a fair uh criticism and it wouldn't surprise me that when the new hardware comes out they will make um something for somebody who is specifically only wants to have the online element because they like you said they just play Halo and they want to make sure that they can do that on their Xbox. And I think you have to respect that as well. So I don't think that it's probably their long-term plan to cut them out. But if I were to do marketing, I would heavily market the all-inclusive, all-in-one deal you can't refuse as opposed to, and also there's like an online thing you can do. Yeah. Holly plays Halo, you get Game Pass, you get Halo Infinite day one. There you go. It's true. You should... All You're you marketing it. There Just you go. clip that out and make that the Halo Infinite commercial for Game Pass. You're done. Um, I'm going to move a couple things around on the show notes here, Brittany, and kick it to you to give us a recap on what happened with the Nintendo Mini Direct. Oh, yeah. So last night, I think it was, what, 11 p.m. or so, Nintendo puts out this tweet. And they're like, join us tomorrow at 7 a.m. for a Mini Direct. <laughs> and to be fair, I thought they were very clear very clear in their um, promotion of what they were going to talk about. So I'm going to pull it up real quick because I want to read the tweet. Because as normal, people got their hypes and their panties all in a bundle. I mean, uh, it's Nintendo. Me That's what Nintendo fans do. They, you know, they set their expectations way too high. And then they complain loudly on the internet that their expectations didn't get met. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much what happened. Actually, okay. So here's the tweet. On 720, we'll debut the first Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase, a series focused on titles from our development and publishing partners. Partners. We'll share a few updates on a small, small group of previously announced, previously announced Nintendo Switch games. Check out the full video release at 7 a.m. So then everyone's like, oh my God, we're getting Bayonetta and Kingdom Hearts and no more Mario news. The Mario remaster is coming. It's like, no, it's not. Okay, anyway, this read comes from Eurogamer. <laughs> the long awaited Shin Megami Tensei 5 launches for Nintendo Switch worldwide in 2021. Nocturne, Nocturne. The third entry in Alice's role playing game series gets an HD remaster for Switch coming in the slightly more definitive time frame next spring. Both were shown in action during today's Nintendo Direct Mini and made up the bulk of its announcements. This uh, Direct was 8 minutes and like 11 seconds. The other reveal of note was Cadence of Hyrule Season Pass containing three DLC slices, the first of which is out today. These three packs add five new characters, 39 new songs, and an additional story featuring Skull Kid, respectively. Cadence of Hyrule's second and third DLC packs launch before October, and if you buy them all via the Season Game Pass, you get some new Link and Zelda costumes. Upcoming high res studio shooter Rogue Company and WWE 2K Battlegrounds were also shown. Now, Mary, does this get does this get you all fluttered in any way, shape, or form? No, there was just nothing in that <laughs> giant semblance of words that you had that made me feel really stoked. And I also love how WWE 2K Battlegrounds was mentioned as it was there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> What a participation trophy for you to add at the end there. No, I mean, my expectations were low and they were met. This was not meant to be like a big reveal. This was meant to be literally what they said, which is we have other people 
who uh, work on smaller projects or they're finishing games we've already announced and talked about. We're going to let them talk about it a little more, maybe show you a little bit more. And everyone freaked out because that's what they do. Yeah. And we got back to Earth. Um, there's This is nothing anyone should be mad at Nintendo over. Smaller games deserve love too. These are like, they have niche audiences. People love this stuff. Let them have their day in the sun. It just wasn't my jam. Exactly. Very well said. And I mean, what I am excited about those Cadence of Hyrule, I'm surprised this game is getting DLC because it came out. Oh, well, gosh. When did that game originally come out? I don't even remember. But Wasn't I really it enjoyed it. spring last year? Uh, June 2019. Oh. So about a year ago. Feels like forever, forever ago. But it's, I think it's exciting that they're getting new songs, the new characters, and the new story content. I really enjoy this, and it's co-op, which is fantastic. And if you can get past kind of like the little beat aspect of it, I think the beat movement of it, I really thought it was a fun Zelda game. And it's co-op, like I said, and that's it's very rare that we get co-op Zelda games. So I'm excited about that. But um, other than that, Rogue Company is not something that's ever really gotten me excited. It's a third-person online multiplayer shooter. And it's cross-play and cross-progression, so if that's a thing you're excited about, cool. And Shin Megami Tensei, that's never been a series I've familiarized myself with, and I'm kind of sad about it, because looking at these trailers and whatnot, I think it's something I would really enjoy. But uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5 was actually announced in 2017, and now all we kind of got was this little, like, cinematic trailer, so I have a feeling that game is still a far ways away. But hey, if you created Persona, I'm going to try your shit. Persona's great. Go Persona 5. Thirsty Panda said that Nintendo was really smart to soften the blow in the tweet, LOL. And I like super <laughs> agree, which yeah. is like, I feel like someone in Nintendo was basically like, we should at least tweet before we say that we're having any kind of direct, right? Which gets everyone really stoked that we like say something like already announced, small, small teams, little projects and do our best. And even that like didn't really do it, but it, I'm so glad they said that. Oh, yeah. But that's just the thing. is, It's so weird. Nintendo's so quiet. So quiet. Because you imagine in a world without COVID, you know, E3 would have come and gone by now. What would they have had in their pipeline? What would have been there? And obviously, I understand, like, COVID has put a, uh, put a lot of things on hold. I understand. But it's just, like, what? That Mario remaster? Are we still getting that? What's happening? What are you doing over there, Nintendo? I'm watching you. Brittany's watching you. Be careful. Look out. I'm watching you. Lurking outside in your bushes. Um, <laughs> not doing that. Speaking of Please watching things, <laughs> segue. Uh, the Day of the Devs 2020 showcase happened this morning. It started pretty early, so if you missed it, you're, you can still go watch the VOD, of course. And there weren't a ton of, like, big announcements that happened, but there were a couple that I wanted to highlight. Um, first up, musical group Kiro Kiro Bonito played a full-length version of the catchy Bug Snacks theme for the presentation, and then I Am 8-Bit announced that they are bringing that hit to a 7-inch vinyl made in collaboration with Young Horses, of course, the developer of Bug Snacks, and it's going to be tucked into a strawberry-scented scratch-and-sniff oh. jacket. Yo. That's so cool. I love scratch-and-sniff shit. Bug Snacks. Whoa, whoa. Talking about Bug Snacks. That song slaps, everybody. It slaps. It does. It's good. Um, I did reach out to their PR person on Twitter, one Jean-Vive Saint-Ange, and said, hey, listen, that scratch and sniff jacket is pretty neat, but what about getting a plushie of the strawberry? Can we, yes. can we make that happen? I want that strawberry plushie, really. She didn't respond. I think the premise of Bug Snacks kind of disturbs me, though. There are these, it's fruit with eyes. So the Here we go. Like Let's get into it. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, no. If, tell imagine me. if your fruit was living and breathing, which it technically is, but it just doesn't have humanoid features in it. So you don't really feel bad, like plucking a strawberry from its house and eating it. I think that'd be like the equivalent if I were to go to Andrea's house and make me like 50 times bigger, opening her roof and just reaching down and then like eating her and be like, all right, cool. Like, how would you feel, Andrea? You wouldn't feel great about that. And this whole game, it seems like it's about eating fruit that is animalized. And then you become that fruit. You know, it's just kind of fucked up. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's definitely weird. No, no doubt about it. I don't know. <laughs> Britt, can I ask you something? Yeah. Huh. Shoot. How do you feel about Viva Pinata? I've never played Viva Pinata. And my wife, one Christine Steimer, I think that's one of the reasons we're going to get divorced one of these days. 
because I haven't played it. Well, imagine a game where there's really adorable, cute animals that are colorful and lively and they're running around paddocks and having a good time. And then you beat them with the stick. And that's the premise of the game. That's just as equally fucked up. Here's the thing. You can't take things like pinatas and fruit and slap eyeballs on them and they're going to violence her. We're going to eat you. Huh? We're going to beat with a stick. It's not okay. Yes, well, you can. I mean, they you do can, it all though. the time. Yeah. It's very successful. Yeah. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. But what about <laughs> a game where you play a human that goes around entrapping cute creatures because you want oh, to. Oh, I have issues with Pokemon. <laughs> I have many issues with Pokemon. <laughs> She it's not right. She knew. She no. She knew which game I was talking about. I know where you're going with that, and I am with you. I am all for the freedom of Pokemon. Those Pokemon that should not be sucking those little balls. It's terrible. You go to this huge, vast, open world. You capture a Rapidash, a beautiful horse, and you're like living this ball, bitch. That's terrible. And when I want you to come out, come out and fight. Now, Jason and I have had many drunken conversations about this and why Pokemon is really messed up. There's a lot of perfect, it. But Gaming it's up. history with abusing cute and adorable creatures goes back to like the stone ages. Mario abuses the shit out of Yoshi. Oh yeah. Abuses him. And there's even like levels where you have to kill Yoshi in order to get through. Like probably one of them's gonna fall and you yeah. just discard him. Um, I think like just Jeff Gerson has like a whole statement about this. It's, they're just thrown away. They're just like waste full creatures yeah. and that you abuse even Wait, though they're adorable like, we're waste. like consistently doing this to ourselves bug snacks is just another stone in the bucket of us hurling adorable creatures into like pits <laughs> of despair for our amusement and that's this is just another one we've we've come this far we have it's a sad state but you know this is where we are this is where sure. we anyway, are i'm gonna play bug snacks I'm gonna play. Yeah, I'm gonna play it too. <laughs> play I want today. strawberry orange. And we're orange. all gonna play. Um, another uh, announcement that happened this morning: Overcooked All You Can Eat Edition is coming with crossplay multiplayer. So what that essentially means is it takes Overcooked One and Overcooked Two and smashes them in to a game, and it's coming to PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. And of course, that means they also added online gameplay for Overcooked One because I don't know. It feels like forever ago to think about how far away overcooked one was but it wasn't really that long ago but i guess because we usually only played it local i didn't realize that they didn't have online online multiplayer um but now they both will and it's essentially like a like a like a very light remaster uh, of these two games so cool I yeah i personally felt like overcooked one was amazing and overcooked two was overcooked one with more levels so i'm interested to see them actually do something technically different um, so I appreciate this because I thought that Overcooked 2 would have online, like you said. It's like it was surprising it didn't, quite frankly. Yeah, so I'm glad that they are working to add that. And I know that there was rumors about an Overcooked 3 announcement. Didn't we get an Overcooked 3 announcement? To Google. I thought so, but no? No. Maybe? May. No, the first article is overcooked three question mark which is never a good sign no yeah it's, it's a reddit article definitely not yep. a thing um <laughs> but yeah no I th there was rumors that we were going to get an overcooked three announcement today and but instead it is the all you can eat edition so not a proper overcooked three but maybe the next best thing so i th honestly think it's maybe a little too soon for overcooked three i think that this is a good way for them to keep fans interested or get people in that maybe haven't played overcooked yet so if you want to get into screaming matches with your friends and family about oh. setting the kitchen on fire overcooked no thanks does this look like a man who had all he could eat <laughs> depends which uh which character you are i'd say um, yeah, <laughs> but we do have a couple more quick announcements uh, before we wrap up the news segment. I guess I probably should have just tacked this onto the Xbox news. Uh, sea of Thieves has officially surpassed 15 million players. It's wow. biggest month ever. Wow. So Polygon wrote up just like a little blurb about it. So June 2020 was the most active month the game has ever seen with 3.3 million active players. The game launched on Steam at the beginning of June and has sold over 1 million copies through the platform. The Seafaring Pirate game has grown in popularity since January, attracting over 5 million new players in just six 
months. Boy, I can tell everybody has been sailing the seas in quarantine. Since it allows players to explore season adventure around with friends, it's become a popular pickup during the pandemic. And we are excited here at What's Good Games, Mary, that they have announced that private servers are coming to the game. So this is really, I'm really happy for this team. Uh, all that juice in chat says props to Sea of Thieves. None of us believed in it. Admit it. And yeah, I mean, at the beginning, remember how bare bones that game was? Remember all the issues they were having? We're like, oh, this is, yeah. uh, I don't know what there's, isn't there a phrase like out of water, fish out of, I don't know. I was going to try to make a, 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 sea, a, a sea pun and I completely failed. Anyway, congratulations, her. I think this is great. You did it. I was wrong. I, I think good. it's awesome you admitted that. <laughs> We were very much excited at the beginning, and uh, as Brittany mentioned, I think we just wanted more from the experience, and I'm glad that Rare has stuck with it and that Microsoft has continued to invest in this title because I think that they need more live service games that are family-friendly, that are part of their first-party studios and aren't just like Fortnite you know, on the platform, and I like that Sea of Thieves kind of allows people to have a competitive edge but also allows people to you know connect with other players and do more fun and friendly stuff our biggest thing mary that we kept talking about we wanted was pve now they we know that they did like a brief like pve mode but that they don't have like dedicated pve servers and they don't have a dedicated pve mode and so i think private servers are a good step in that direction of like hey, it would be awesome if we could like make our own server where we make the rules and if we say like hey we're not killing each other on the high seas today uh you can do that but obviously if you're just in the regular matchmaking it can still get kind of bad but they did address a lot of the griefing issues that presented itself at launch but i mean a multiplayer game is gonna multiplayer you're always gonna get griefers so yeah i think you're you hit the nail on the head though with saying like we're in a world where you can't really explore irl and so we're finding that players more and more are looking for long-term immersive experiences um where they can socialize with their friends in an environment and not just for one day but for months at a time and keep coming back and finding new ways to explore and new content and that really did happen with sea of thieves so it's like this game isn't perfect. I had the same uh, kind of off-putting first experience where it was really buggy um, and it was kind of complicated in nature. It was like, where, what am I actually doing in this game? And then there's like the issue with like just either like harassment or, you know, people like coming after you. And so that can be um, a negative first impression. But the reality is, is that if you can get a good group of people to have fun with, you can spend hours and hours and hours in this. And so you're seeing way more bang for your buck. This is the new wow. This is what people spend a little bit of money on and get an ungodly amount of content for. And it's a lot of value. So why not? Why not have those fun experiences? I think it's a really sweet experience. I had the same reaction when I played um, Dead by Daylight the first time. I was like, this is a sweet game, but it's probably not gonna take off because it's asymmetrical 4v1 and it's weird. Uh, but it blew up because you can play it every day for six months and not get bored because it's still <laughs> really fun. So that's what people want. Like if people are like thinking of new IPs right now, what you want is experiences where like four people can just sit there for months and do it. That's what we want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Put that game on Game Pass, man. Yeah. What she said. Yeah, Mary. Um, I'm mm -hmm. realizing that I forgot to mention at the end of the Day of the Devs blurb that there was over a dozen indie games showcased. Obviously, that was the bulk um, of what happened on the Day of the Devs showcase this morning. And the Muppets made an appearance, which was kind of huh? fun. And huh. I don't know why the Muppets made an appearance, but I don't really care. It was cool. They were promoting their new Disney Plus series, Muppets Now!, and, of course, you know, talking about video games with, with Jeff Keighley. So <laughs> that's a thing that happened. If you want to take a deep dive into all of those indie games and see the Muppets, of course, like I mentioned, yeah. you can watch the VOD. Um, I want to kind of breeze through the rest of the news here so we can get to some questions. So you guys may have heard, <laughs> tears, that Destiny 2 Beyond Light has been delayed. <laughs> no, but it's okay rip. because you know it, making games is hard and making games during pandemic is even harder so Bungie did put up a little bit of a 
announcement explaining the decision on Bungie.net. And it says that they've made the decision to move the release of Beyond Light to November 10th. And as the first chapter in a new trilogy of expansions, Beyond Light is the beginning of a new era of Destiny 2. And I'm not going to kind of wax poetic of everything that we read here, but just to kind of skip to the meat of it, it says over the coming weeks, we'll be unveiling more of what we're working on for Beyond Light and what that means for Season of Arrivals, which will now extend to November 10th. Beyond Light sets the stage for an incredible future in Destiny 2. And though it's coming later than we originally anticipated, we're excited to continue that journey with you. So I think it's interesting that they're going to try to support Season of Arrivals until November. I think that... On one hand, it's great that they're not going to pressure their team into making new content before Beyond Light. And on the other hand, I think that we're just going to see a dip in Destiny activity, you know, because people are going to be like, well, I've done pretty much all I can do in Season of Arrivals. And maybe, you know, put Destiny 2 on the digital shelf for like a month or something and try something else until Beyond Light arrives. But no surprise that pandemic is hard and Bungie's like, we need more time. And in case you missed it, I originally thought that there was going to be more Pokemon news later this week. That's not true. Can't, but there, Pokemon Go Fest is happening later this week. Um, so we can, you know, maybe if we get some information about how that goes on Thursday, we can add it to the show on Friday. And Dr. Disrespect spoke out about his ban, everybody. But he didn't say anything, really. He was just like, oh, yeah, no, they didn't tell me. And we're like, cool. So what's this interview about? Really? Don't know. I don't know. Brett, like did you see it? Tour. Yeah. Did you see any of it? <laughs> Brit, any of the I stories? Saw, I saw a headline where he's, but I honestly didn't remember any of it because it's I, whatever. He's Dr. Disrespect. So can you give me like the TLDR? Oh, yeah. The TLDR said- is like, oh, I don't know what happened, bro. I'm keeping my options open. I'm focused on the Champions Club. That was it. That's the TLDR. So, so bizarre. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, bye, Felicia. Um, anyway, yep. uh, Jeff Keighley went hands-on with the DualSense, the new upcoming controller for the PlayStation 5. Whoa, he sure did. I mean, like, <laughs> what do you say? It's a controller. It looks about as big as the DualShock 4, but slightly bigger. <laughs> I mean, it looks, I would say significantly bigger, actually, looking at some of these comparison photos. I'm want, maybe I should find the one on his Twitter. I'm sure he posted one on his Twitter profile because I was looking at a oh, photo earlier. He posted like 40 photos yeah. of that controller. He was like exclusive. Hey, seen. everybody, yeah. I got the exclusive. Oh, we and heard. Like, I, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sorry, it, go it, ahead, Mary. <laughs> Wait, huh? tell, Wait, what's no, happening? Brent, tell him what, what's the controller size? She's like got a controller ready to express. Oh, oh how big is it? Oh, it's... <laughs> No, it's uh, I, I'm looking at the PS4 control, the first, the the new one, Dual Sense, and yeah, it's it's much thicker, it's much more curved on the sides. Um, <laughs> it looks clean. Uh, you know, I I have to say I am a fan though. I've never really been the biggest fan of the Dual Shock Four or the Dual Shock controllers in general. They uh, just kind of make my my old arthritic hands cramp up a bit. But I like the ergonomic look of the Dual Sense. I think it looks like it's going to be much more comfortable. And when you put them side by side, it looks like the button placements are all the same. Like where the D-pad is on the Dual Sense, on the Dual Shock, it's on the Dual Sense. But just like the body of it is just different. I like it. I like the look of it. I just want to see what the backside of this bitch looks like. This controller, well, in my opinion, is so crampy when you hold it for a long time if this isn't in my hand my hands are like this this is so uncomfortable I feel like it's always been uncomfortable and I never cared for it I've always like preferred the Xbox controller especially like the old school Xbox controller like the 360 which was like really round and like let your hands not be like crunched up um yeah I think I have one improvement the 360 controller to me was like the best controller oh I have an old one here Look at this. Oh, you do? Nice. They're just so, so comfy. You know? just like I, have, I have purchased games um, on a PC uh, so that I could use a gamepad instead of purchasing them on a PS4 because of this controller difference, specifically. Oh, I wow. have chosen a piece, like, also typically the graphic quality is higher uh, on PC. But I did it for the controller. Yeah. For the controller. This controller feels good in your hand. This one's too small. So I like the fact that they addressed this. It's good. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have all these fucking controllers on my desk. Look at this one. This is a PS2. Oh, controller. look at that old school oh. controller. Yeah, because I play um, uh, Silent Hill on Thursday, so I've been playing that on the PlayStation too. So like yeah, they've all been they've yeah. been for tiny people. You have to have baby hands. You have to have tiny baby hands. Um, excuse me, I have tiny baby hands, and so <laughs> I really enjoy that they're small, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I also really like I'm, I'm with you that to me like my favorite controller has been the Xbox 360 controller I like the technological advancements that the Xbox One controller made but I do hope that the Xbox Series X controller will finally do away with that battery pack and just do USB charging only and for the love of God can one of the con- console makers please just make a wireless charging pad like, can we, like, integrate that somehow or sell it as a third-party accessory? I, something. <laughs> Say it again for the people in the back. Can somebody yeah. make a wireless controller charging pad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a fan. How do you ladies feel about the white of the controller, though? I love it. I love yeah. it. I know that it's so divisive, but I'm, like, I'm, I'm team black and white. I'm into it. I really like it too. Thing is, I don't eat or anything while I play games. I don't have like grubby, nasty hands, so I'm not worried about getting like stuff on it. But it's just so it looks so pretty. I don't know if I want to taint it. Well, here's yeah. here's a pro tip, everybody. If you have things that you you know get finger grime on, like a controller, may I introduce you to your friend, the Mr. Clean Eraser Pad? Oh, do you have sticky jam hands? <laughs> Ew, wash them. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, oh, wash oh, your hands. Sorry, condom pants Brit over here has a problem with jam hands. <laughs> Touche. I will, shut, I will shut up. I will sit down and shut up now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She got me. Amazing. She got me. Um, and on that note, let's kind of wrap up the news segment for this week uh thank you everybody for hanging with us we know it's been kind of a a twisty road but now we're going to take a few of your questions in our dear wgg segment so as you guys have noticed uh we do have a couple of people that have just joined us if you have on twitch welcome to the show uh mary kish is here and as i said at the very top of the show she is the head of community marketing so mary i was realizing that I don't really know what your job is or what you do. Neither do my parents. <laughs> uh, it's a weird Welcome. job. <laughs> I'm excited to do it. Uh, head of community marketing basically works on things that get the community, the Twitch community, to join together and have fun, to want to participate, and to learn about Twitch. So it's basically like about engaging and exciting and educating. Um, so some of the programs that we write are like, what does that mean? Some of the programs we work on are holidays. So we run things like Halloween or Valentine's Day that make everybody um, have fun moments of romance or scares on stream. So like every Valentine's Day, we typically show like streamers who have proposed to their SIGs on stream, which is really cute. Um, And Halloween is typically like a scare fest and things like that. Uh, We also run all of our unity initiatives. So that's things like Black History Month, Women's History Month, and what's coming up next month, Hispanic Heritage Month. And what we do is we ensure that we are showcasing how amazing and diverse the platform is by showcasing streamers that identify with that background. Uh, We also run Pride, which just wrapped up, which was dope because you get all those Pride emotes if you participated in Pride. And then that money went towards um, like a Pride focused charity, uh, which was the Trevor Project this year. We love working with them because they um, help teens in need and and basically anyone who is looking for someone to talk to. So it's really fun working on those programs. Um, And I also run meetups, which are kind of, it's hard to meet up right now, but if you were to, you could find a local meetup in LA or in uh, Portland and go meet up with other people who want to talk about video games. And we also run Creator Camp, which teaches people how to stream. I didn't know that you guys did meetups. Yeah. Um, I mean, did. Hopefully we'll do again. That's really really cool. Yeah. There's so many pride emotes in chat. And I have to say, I just love them. So um, if you guys have the bee, that's my favorite one. I love the bee pride emotes. Um, But yeah, we run... 
we run meetups. So if you go to meetups.twitch.tv, you'll see um, meetups in almost every city in the United States, but they're global. So we have meetups in London and we have meetups in Germany. Um, and believe it or not, all of our international meetups are still like totally active and going on because they've dealt with everything perfectly and properly. And we're still kind of sussing it out. But you can do meetups online with people in your local area right now. So you can like basically do a digital meetup with everyone from Seattle, which is still fun. Wow. So Twitch is such a large audience. What's it like to try to wrangle <laughs> an audience that large? It's difficult. It is like um, a joy to do things where everybody can get behind them. Like, for example, everyone rallies around pride. It's just something I feel like we can all agree is dope and like lovely and something we can all put our hearts into. It's hard to find those moments because our community is so big. Um, typically, almost anything we do, someone will be like, why did you do this? And it's like, why not? You know, yeah. why not do this? Why not try and celebrate? Not everybody is stoked, but I would say like, generally speaking, when we do something like Valentine's Day, you get a lot of people who are really excited that they were featured or that they just feel like they got a little extra love. Um, and we even make up our own holidays because we're global. Amazing. So like this Saturday, we're doing Parents Day where we're gonna feature a bunch of streamers who either have had their parents on stream or they are parents and they have their kids and stuff. And I think that's dope. Like we don't do Mother's Day because it's different in America than it is in uh, Europe, right? So it's like different holidays. So we just celebrate it on our own accord. And if you guys aren't interested in Parents Day, that's fine because we have other ones. But if you are, we can show you guys like really awesome streamers that have kids. And I think that's cool too. It's almost like you should let people celebrate things and be happy and love what they love. Huh. What a the your concept. Profit. What a weird <laughs> concept, Mary. <laughs> You're speaking my language. Yeah, we uh, we try and appeal to as many people as possible, but the reality is is that not everything is for everybody, and that's okay, too. So if it's not your jam, hang out until next month. There'll be other cool things that we do because there's always something happening in the world that we want to celebrate. Oh, we do Pets Day. That's, like, next month, I think. What? If your pet is on stream, um, send me a clip of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's definitely been plenty of moments where, where Mav has been on stream, so much so that I had to make him an emote. Um, we do have Reb emotes as well, but Reb has never really made a stream appearance. He appeared on the show one time, or was it a Patreon stream? It's, he's, he's made a little appearances here and there where he thinks he can climb in my chair. And I'm like, no, your head is huge and your body is heavy. Get off of me. It's true. <laughs> in in Britain's defense, Reb is giant and Mav is not. I mean, Rab, Mav is... Your oh, Reb okay. emo is so good. There's a... Yeah, there's, he, there's two... <laughs> so, there's so such dumb. Ha we have handsome boys here at What's Good Games. Our pets are very, very handsome. Yeah, I, am, <laughs> I was conflicted because I wanted to do like a closer photo. And I might even do a second one that's like zoomed in on Mav's face. But I wanted to get his yeah. ears in yep. and in order to get the ears in I had to kind of zoom the zoom the face up but yeah the the dual reb emotes are pretty great dude the derp one is really good too I love that and I think like you're right you can't it, it's really restrictive because of the size and how big they can be but I think zooming them in and just showing how like weird our pets are is really good um Boots has my um thick emote which is um I commissioned a my dog in booty jorts um, with his butt facing the camera. That's and, like, oh my hilarious. God. Its name is Thick with two C's. So. Booty it's like, jorts. <laughs> booty jorts. Imagine the hardest face when I was like, that's correct. I said booty jorts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a denim diaper almost. <laughs> <laughs> not with those thick cakes he's popping out <laughs> um this is oh this God. is hilarious <laughs> i didn't know frenchies were as known for their for their thick butts as, as i thought corgis like had the corner on the butt market yeah they've had them they've had their moment in the sun i'll tell you that but oh. um my boy is uh, a thick chunker too. So there's enough butt love to go around to all of the animals. Yes. I yes. I'm with you. I like it. Um, <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> so we do have a question from um, actually one of our awesome mods. So this is from Grizz. And um, he writes, for Mary, are there any tips for someone trying to get affiliated with Twitch who doesn't have a huge social following? And I thought that, that you would be the perfect person to answer this because I asked you this exact same question about what's good games. 
Yeah, you did. I mean, you do have a really wonderful social following and you guys have um, like just built this wonderful community. And so you have this great leg up because you have already you've been in the game for a really long time and you um, your task was more of like, how do I transition? How do I like put them on a different platform, which is asking a lot of people who are totally. already spending their precious time with you. Um, to me, when you're talking about affiliate, you're not talking about money. You're talking about the precious resource of a human being's time. How do I convince someone to spend their time with me as opposed to anywhere else on the internet? People always ask like, what's Twitch's like biggest competition? And my answer is typically Netflix. It's where are you spending your evening time? I like to spend it watching TV and I also like to literally spend it watching people on Twitch. When I choose to watch new people, um, when I'm looking actively and seeking out new audiences, what I'm always looking for is like pretty much what everyone's always looking for. And I will tell you right now, it is someone who is always talking. They have something to say, whether it's about their day or about the clothes that they're wearing or about the game that they're playing or about like what they're looking forward to next week. They always have something to say and that they're engaged and interacting with chat because we're not a passive experience where you're watching a VOD on YouTube where you guys are here and I can literally say your name, right? I can like see Coder Chris. And the whole point is that like when you guys talk to me, you can interact with what's going on here. You can change what we talk about you can change the game. If everybody in chat all of a sudden just all wrote like, like, boo, get off the stage, like, boo, it prompts Andrea to be like, let's change the subject because this isn't going well, but right? Please don't write or, boo. <laughs> I'll ban the shit out of you. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> but like, if you say something that you like, it also changes the game. So chat isn't literally just watching, you're involved in the experience. And so to get to affiliate, when you're starting your channel, the main things that I say to you is ask your chat to participate, reward them for participating, even if it's like a couple people, because that's still dope. If I had two people in my room right now, like where I was playing video games, first I'd be like, what are you doing in my house? But afterwards I would be like, <laughs> check out this game. And we would talk about it together. And two people is enough to do that. It's enough to have a conversation. And if there's no one, then I talk to myself and I actively get used to being like, dang, Assassin's Creed, again, like wild, it's the same. And you just enjoy <laughs> that experience. And if you can get into that, I think people, when they stop by, they'll stay. They'll be more likely to stay because they're talking to you and they're having experience with you as opposed to passively watching. So, that is that's it. Great advice. That is phenomenal advice. And the talking to yourself part was something that you and I had chatted about. And I'm pretty comfortable doing a lot of extemporaneous speaking because of what I do for a living. But I know that the vast majority of creators on Twitch don't have my background, don't have mm -hmm. on-camera training, don't have improv training or any kind of performance training whatsoever. They are just incredibly passionate about the content that they're streaming. And so sometimes mm -hmm. getting yourself out of that shell and being comfortable just talking and maybe hearing the sound of your voice can be really tough for some creators but you're such a great um piece of advice in saying even if nobody's watching just keep practicing because the more you do it the more comfortable you get Brittany and I give that advice to people who come to us and are like I want to start a podcast or I want to start a YouTube channel like what do I do how do I do it and we're like you can do it right now nothing's stopping you from starting literally today and sometimes it's even better if you just start and you don't tell anyone you started so you can kind of do a soft launch and you can practice and maybe you make your early videos private or maybe you don't and you go back and you watch from it and like that's such great advice for people who want to look into building a community on Twitch as well. Totally. Yeah, you guys um, you guys have been like kind of built for this. And I remember having these conversations with Andrew where I was like, most of the time streamers have the opposite um, uh, skill set that Andrea has. Andrea is like a tried and true host. You could give her like a page Aww. of an intro and she'll memorize it and then say it on camera and she won't skip a beat. A lot of streamers cannot do that. They have no hosting experience but you put them on a stream and they're gregarious and they're funny and they're having a good time and they're interacting with chat and they're like uh, reading subs and donos and they're just doing it all really, really well. And Andrea is like, um, I will read this script, but what else do I need to do, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. there's multiple things 
that you have to do based on the platform that you're on. And you guys have adapted like super well, you're killing it. It's really awesome to see your chat being very interactive and enjoying like what's happening. So it's a, it's a really good balance. And you basically have just added additional skills into your giant bag of skills that you have. It's a uh-huh. big bag. Big, it's a big, big old, old bag, bag of skills. I want a yeah. big, I want the biggest bag. I will keep making yeah, the bag the bigger. Advice to you and just to kind of tap all that off is, and be patient with yourself too. This isn't yeah. something, you know, I, I still consider myself to be mostly an introvert unless I'm like around my people. You know, I'm pretty quiet. I'm really, really chill. I'm very like go with the flow. But now I've been, that I've been doing this for so long, it's like second nature. You know, I could be having the worst day possible, but you get me in front of a camera to do something with what's good or whatever. And my mood just brightens up because it's like my mentality just automatically goes into like hosting mode or co-host or something where it's like, okay, this is like second nature now. And it's kind of a learned skill and something that I've never had any professional anything you know this is just something that I kind of learned to do because I love to do it but yeah just be patient and it'll get easier with time my very first video I ever shot for YouTube for, for example I had to take like three shots beforehand and I would record like every 30 seconds stop and rewatch it to see what I said and then I would edit it then I would continue recording for another 30 seconds stop and splice it all together it's been a, it's been a journey but you know we all have to start somewhere indeed I love that um, yeah. Well, you Mary- guys should watch all your old VODs one time. I would watch Oh, that. dude. I've done oh. that. <laughs> like your originals, like your first. I oh, love yeah. to see like Andrea's like first interview ever, which I'm sure you have somewhere on the internet. My first it's interview good. ever. I honestly don't know if I still have it because I did my first interviews before digital video was really a thing. <laughs> Aren't you <laughs> true, true, true statement though a lot of my like really old videos just like are, are probably lost on, a, on an SD card or actually on a DV tape they're probably on a mini DV tape, tape that's, Mary that's some reality <laughs> for you but I mean like even if you go back to like your first like your oldest one you can find on the internet yeah. mine is like from GameSpot six years ago and you can see how deers and like deer in the headlights I am when they're like let's go to Mary for the recap and I am like <laughs> My eyes are so wide and I don't know how to process any information. And it's obvious that I've like panicked. Like that was the nicest way to put it. But it's funny, like, you know, you come a long way just by doing it. Literally just by existing. By hitting stream, you're getting better. Yeah. The only way. Don't beat yourself up. Exactly. Talk, Talk to yourself in a positive voice. That's the thing that I've been, my mantra I've been saying throughout pandemic. Um, well, Mary, this has been absolutely a joy. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for joining Brittany and I on the show today. Uh, we didn't quite get as much time as I would have liked to talk about your personal Twitch channel, but please let everybody know where they can follow you, where they can watch you stream. You had mentioned that you're doing Silent Hill Thursdays, but you do a bunch of other stuff in your channel too. Yeah, yeah. I play, um, I play typically stream three times a week right now. So I stream on Mondays and that's my time to play either indie games or platformers or honestly anything I feel like playing today. I'll be playing Ooblets. Um, yes. Tuesday is Resident Evil Day. So I played through every Resident (laughs) Evil plus all of the like random ones like Code Veronica. I'm speaking Brit's language. I know. Uh, and so we're obviously waiting for the next Resident Evil to come out. So, um, because I've already played all the other ones, we're playing through Dead Space right now, just as like a filler until, um, the next Resident Evil comes out. So I've been, I finished Dead Space 1 and we're on Dead Space 2. It's going fairly well. I've killed many necromorphs and, uh, I will continue to try to kill them. (laughs) Uh, and then on Thursdays, I play uh, through the Silent Hill series. So we played through the numbered series. Um, we just finished uh, Homecoming. This is the one I just finished on the PlayStation 2. And I think Origins is next. Um, but what we did last time, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Dead by Daylight had a DLC that was Silent Hill. And you could play as uh, Pyramid Head. So we played that last week, which was crazy fun. Nice. Aww. I know that Dead by Daylight has a pretty active streaming community. And Zombie Kill says, I cringe. Oh, no, not that one. She says, y'all, she's amazing. She screams a lot. That was a volume down. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They are scary games. And I don't have, like, too much of, like, a filter. So they're definitely PG-13. And you want to make sure that your headphones are loose 
So yeah, <laughs> come find me. Okay. I'm a uh, Mary Kish. It's my name, just spelled M E R R Y. So enjoy. I'm always around, and I really appreciate you guys having me. You guys have um, top notch tier guests on every 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 episode, and you guys make wonderful content. I'm stoked to hear that Andrea is going. Uh, to be back on Kind of Funny Games because I missed you on that show. I think oh, you're a wonderful you. addition to that team. So it felt like it was only a matter of time before they brought you back. But congratulations. And I look forward to seeing more of you guys' stuff as you make it. Thank you. Um, we'll put all of Mary's links in the show notes. So if you guys are like, where were those links again? If you missed it, just you know, hit that um, description, uh, whether you're watching here on Twitch or of course listening on podcasts or later of course at youtube.com slash what's good games. All right, that is gonna do it for our show for today. We will be back with all of the streams throughout the week and for the show on Friday. Until then, have a great week, everybody. Bye.